I hear a lot of, of discussion around data, metrics. You remember, Alexander, when we, we first had contacts, I, I think more than 10 years ago, uh, we worked together. I was in Agri then on, on TIB, which is the uh, economics of ecosystems and biodiversity. So my question is, what happened to TIB in terms of true cost accounting? The true cost of food was also cited in the UN Food System Summit, but didn't have any traction. And we go again into uh, natural capital, all this data, which is not easy to compile. Eh? And then it brings me to carbon, carbon credits, carbon payments, payments for ecosystem services. Another area which is not easy, not always tractable. Um, and you see the big debate in COP around uh, uh, yes for deforestation, but then how to do carbon credits and, and, and create a market, which benefits the small farm holders as well, not the big financial companies. So um, clearly, I'm, 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 I'm really, really looking forward also. We will see the new German government. We'll have the French presidency of the, of the council from 1st January, which puts this topic. So we, we will have a strong momentum, but it also needs to land at country level, similar to what landed in, in Andhra Pradesh. Yes, Alexander. Thanks a lot. You are right. True cost accounting is not easy. But the conventional way to measure success in agriculture is simplistic. They count nature as zero. They count biodiversity as zero. They count emissions as zero. So that, that's easy. We would like to change it, and therefore we have to struggle. Uh, but but we, we, know in, we, we know enough to say that without considering the value of nature, we will continue to degrade. And we know that the cost of inaction is a lot higher than the cost of action. And therefore, I would be happy, and I could, could, share, I could share it in the chat, what work has been done so far, not perfect, but we have to do a, a paradigm shift and change starts in our head. And Look, what, I, what, 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 I, what I think is that in energy, we know we have to move from fossil fuels to renewable. Agriculture and food systems are much more complex and therefore we need a new measurement. Otherwise, we don't know in which direction we have to go. Sorry. I fully agree, um, Alexander. That, that was a bit... Um what happened in the run-up to the UN Food System Summit, because food systems thinking and food system policy making is not an easy topic. This is not the realm of one or two or three ministries. We mobilized eight DGs. And to be honest, we got a low common denominator because everyone tries to defend <laughs> his own territory. So if you want to do systems, the way how we are working, whether in Germany or in France or in the EU or in many member states uh, or many UN member states, we are working in silos. So, so it requires uh, high political buy-in at the highest level and um, with a strong, robust new research paradigm. And uh, we have the CGIR uh, post UN Food System Summit, post COP, which is much more well-financed, and I hope that we can push also this agenda in the CGIAR as well. So, yes, Alexander. Two, two comments. You are right that we need to have support at the highest political level. And I'm convinced that the agenda of the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, can only be successful if she is measuring the success of the new Green Deal in a different way. She has to integrate natural capital, social cohesion, and others. Otherwise, she will be benchmarked against the, 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 the wrong metrics. Second, I'm not so sure if the CGIR will do with more money business as usual. I am member of the board of eGraph and C4. We are working on agroecology, agroforestry, and on forests. And we are sidelined in the new CGIR. And, and therefore, let us carefully analyze who is using the language in order to continue business as usual, and who goes the difficult way, like our friends in Andhra Pradesh, really changing things and not only producing leaflets for, for, for international conferences. 
Yeah, just if I may, Iris speaking, um, I would just like to add one thing. Um, we, are, we are really strongly supported by the German government, hopefully also by the new coalition, because there was a parliament resolution in 2019 already on supporting agroecology. So uh, for, for BMZ mainly. So yes, uh, I think this will continue to be supported also financially and also in other parts of the world, um, because I know that also GIZ, for instance, is carrying a lot of these new approaches also to, to Africa, and that there is a world, um, a global project on agroecology with GIZ. So yes, I'm, I'm very optimistic that this will be pursued. And um, for Europe, indeed, uh, we have to accept the ambiguity of the system. We only have now the target of 15% of organic agricultural area, but we can improve also. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Iris. But it would also be good to see what financial institutions are going to do, because um, I think that will be the game changer. It will not just be official development assistance and grant money, which will do the trick of scalability. Whether we speak about soil, about nature, about deforestation, this will have to come from new innovative financing mechanisms. So for me, the question is, is there hype around green bonds or not? Can green bonds provide the solution? We hear about carbon sequestration type of bonds. We don't have much information about this. So who, what, what, what is the financial architecture of all this innovative finance to actually realize what uh, what Alexander is doing, because I don't see much traction from the financial institutions, at least uh, they are not much knocking at our door on, on this typology of finance. Yeah, I can see that, Leonard, because also what is a green bond, but you should not really embark on that. It is not really clearly uh, streamlined towards like soils or towards like um, kilocalories per hectare, yeah? It's just streamlined towards, yeah, money, let's say, no? in dollars per hectare, they, they, the green bonds will, will achieve what they should achieve. And there, there also a paradigm shift needs to be done and also a redefinition, what is really a green bond and what is green? Thank you. Well, we have a taxonomy on sustainable finance as well. This is uh, one of sure. the issues coming from, from our colleagues in DG FISMA and uh, DG ECFIN from the, from the financial circuits part.